talk about being like your own like worst critic, right? Yeah. It, was it like you talk about that break that you took? You took a year break, came back with the Cribs <laughs> videos. You took a seven month break, like way before that. Mm. Like, and a lot of those, the catalyst for that was these major events where you were getting so massive, and you would do these events that would bring a lot of criticism from like the PewDiePie's Ace Three, Ace Three. Mm. Were those hard times? to go through and was it hard to consume those videos and see them all the time because they were huge and they also shifted the entire space that you're working in hell yeah mm -hmm. i'm it's a blessing that i'm sitting here in this chair right now mm -hmm. like i wanted to take my life mm -hmm. so many times i write about it in the book when i smashed my head through a window when i was at my breaking point when i was in bali like i was done like like so fuck man there's so much we could talk about but that the the events that you're talking about that was one event okay and i think one that um till this day people bring it up and it really bothers me because when you really break down what i did and what happened with that event and you compare it now to the youtubers who are getting exposed for crypto scams right yeah. or you compare it to the kid the the creators getting charged with pedophilia and mm -hmm. sexting underage kids and all that and they're walking away with a bad boy. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Bad That's boy. All we get. So you're, we're gonna be mad at you for these two weeks, but in two weeks when you post again, you're good. You're getting eight hundred thousand. And everyone's likes. like, "Why the fuck did you not bring Drake? Fuck you!" Like, yeah, like that's, 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 really. That, that's the why most interesting bad. thing to me is that getting canceled as of right now is actually blowing up people's careers almost more yeah. than what they had. Yeah, one hundred percent. And it's for things that are actually not okay. Like, like fucked up. Actually shit. not okay. Like yeah. it's it's like, like it's like not jail um, time shit. Mm -hmm. Like it's fucked. Yeah, mm -hmm. like multi million dollar scams uh yeah. full-on elite like illegal activity mm -hmm. yeah. um mm -hmm. and not just something that might be more of like an internet yeah. uh like fuck up like yeah. you know like, some, like i've always that, i've always wanted to sit down with one of those people like one of those haters literally invite them over mm -hmm. even a line of them and i'll sit in a room and have them come in and tell me like tell me what your grievance is with me because mm -hmm. a lot of the times when i read comments like he lied and told everybody drake was coming <laughs> and he <laughs> never met drake <laughs> yeah Bitch, I, that did, was huge. Did I borrow a single dollar to put on that event? No, yeah. not a single investor. So it's not a social gloves fuck up. Every dollar was out of my own pocket. I lost millions that day. That's out of my pocket. Yeah. Never borrowed a dollar. The the five thousand tickets that were sold for that event, mm -hmm. they were free. I gave them out for free. Yeah. yeah, people were getting a free show. The live stream people were watching before it got canceled. That shit was free. Yeah. So who the fuck did I hurt? You know, yeah. and it's funny because there's actually a huge conclusion to that whole Drake story, which I found out after I got done writing the book, mm -hmm. which is actually absolutely mind blowing, like numb, like it made me numb and crazy. But yeah, at the end of the day, like that, like really, that's what you're mad at. Yeah, that's yeah. what you're mad at. But that person who just told you to invest, invest your last one thousand dollars into dashy toys, milk coin, token, bro, dot com. <laughs> Save who just kids. made you lose all your money, but they gained a hundred and five hundred thousand dollars from it. You ain't mad at. Yeah. yeah. You ain't mad at because they got a good reputation in the, you know, in the YouTube world. The, you know, you're told that they're good, mm -hmm. but you're mad at that. Right. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. The time I grew up, like when Keemstar used to me and Keemstar are business partners now. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Which is ridiculous. crazy. Crazy. Given like what happened at that event. Yeah. For the audience doesn't know, it was basically like a massive kind of fan meetup. You talked about like. Not a fan meetup. Well, it was like a show, right? At the at the Griffith it, it was, Not the Griffith. The, the it, it was, was going it? to be the next Coachella, mm -hmm. um, literally. It was, and I, I've I've even talked to people recently and told them what like big business people and told them mm. what the idea was, and they're like, "That's fucking genius." Hate <laughs> dies, love survives, right? Love yeah. arrives. That title, fuck it. But okay. I'm not gonna say what the actual event was going to be because who knows what the future has in store. Mm -hmm. But it was a giant concert for free. Mm -hmm. They were going to get to see so many artists for free, literally for free, like literally for nothing. But what I was trying to say is back then on Keemstar, like the first time I got exposed for fake pranks. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was that, huge. That, Ace that was a had huge the magnitude... That. To literally give me more hate, death threats, like yeah. unsubscribed, like just more negative energy than people today get for the real crimes. For for fake pranks. Yeah. For fake pranks. Right. And, and mind you, what, what, what entails a fake prank? Hey, I'm going to. Okay, actually, I'll just say this. 
every single thing you see on TikTok with every single relationship, every single best friend couple, every single mom and dad, every single thing, your whole TikTok feed, the fake shit on TikTok these days, back then that I did, which was giving people humor and laughter, it's acceptable today, but back then, it was new to cancel people. So even the minute things could get you canceled. So fake pranks, holy well, shit. Yeah, it was huge. God forbid I tell you how to react when I throw this iced tea in <laughs> yeah. your face. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it, the prank genre was the biggest thing on YouTube. Biggest I think thing. a lot of people also at the same time, because it was so big, so when people were like slap in the face because it's all fake, mm -hmm. it's... Now it's more individual. That you were like the king of the biggest thing on YouTube. Yeah, at that yeah. Point. It, there, there was. I was part of the top three. But the funniest thing about that is, and I'm not gonna drop any names here or say anything. When I took the fall, because I had reached my breaking point. I, I wish I could change so many things. But I remember I was sitting in my penthouse in 1600 Vine, two doors down from Logan Paul, who was still new to YouTube. It was before he even did his colorblind video that <laughs> skyrocketed <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And I finally just sat down and did a 45 minute video saying, yeah, my pranks are fake. But I did that in the vein of getting everybody to understand all the pranks you're watching are fake. Mm. But that's not what happened. Mm. It was everybody's pranks are real, but Fousey's pranks are fake because he admitted it. Yeah. And everybody else who did the fake pranks, who taught me how to fake pranks, were like, oh, that's not us. That's him. So I just uh, sat there like, holy shit. Wow. I just shot myself in the foot. Yeah. It well, was the biggest story. H3 had that. Got, he had one of the guys that was in your acting in your video to come on, and that was a massive interview. No one would give a H3 shit. H three did it. Was it? It was H3. Danny Duncan. Oh shit! Danny Duncan yeah, interviewed the Danny guy. Duncan. That's what it was. My bad. My bad. Yeah. Danny Duncan had an actor come. Danny <laughs> Duncan this. talked about that. It was so weird. This. Oh, me and him have a. I can't talk about. Well, that. He also pranked you at VidCon. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, but there's a long story with me and Danny, but I can't talk about it now. He won't <laughs> let me. But imagine this. All right. Um. Nowadays. If somebody's getting exposed, like let's say H3 is covering a sexual assault case right. or something, yeah. he brings the girl on to interview for her to tell her side of the story, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a real conversation. Yeah, that's, that's like, a real interview. Shit. Now take it back to the day Danny Duncan exposed me. Yeah. He had a guy next to him to say, Wait, you're telling me he paid you thirty dollars <laughs> to <laughs> act? As if you he jumped in your car thinking it was an Uber. Yeah. What? Yeah. It it is it is what? dramatically uncomparable. What? Yeah. Well, and like the thing that I that I've been seeing on TikTok recently is um you know like the guys that like throw rice on people in like the grocery store and then like act like what happened. There has been some videos where they're taking like broomsticks almost, and it's oh, I mean they're yeah, like sexually fuck. assaulting people by like putting it like in, in their like legs. in their like in between their legs. Uh -huh. So it's either fake and it's really fucked up or it's real. real, real. And society has become tone deaf or yeah. they just that person's not big enough to care about. But like yeah. the thing is, like people will still comment on those videos. Like 50 million views. People will comment on. Yeah. Like they'll comment on the video saying like, oh, great content, man. Uh, yo, this is so funny. Ha ha ha. You got her. It's like, nope, that's not how life works. She took a broomstick out of the bus. You just took like, a broomstick in between it. Yeah. Regardless of whatever, you know, you have a agreement beforehand hey can i pay you 30 dollars to stick this broomstick in your ass or you just do it yeah it's fucked up really fucked. fucked up regardless and that's not anywhere remotely yeah. comparable to the lopez brothers what they're doing at the same time too it's yeah. all those all individual people who are doing things that most of the internet says yeah that is very illegal and not okay mm -hmm. but they forget about it after a couple of weeks and that wasn't the case back then when i remember keemstar would break something ace3 react to it that mm -hmm. was the biggest story in the